some situations, the body does not recognize that the embryo is not continuing to develop, that, that the pregnancy is not developing, and the body does not release you know, the, the embryo or, or the fetus or the baby. In this case, intervention might be needed. This is often called a missed miscarriage when the body just never gets the message. This is this is what I experienced. So there are typically three options if this occurs. So one is waiting. The other is taking a medication called misoprostol, sometimes it's called Cytotec, or getting a DNC procedure. And a DNC, it stands for dilation and curatage. Curatage. It's a little bit tricky to pronounce. Okay, so waiting. Um, this is what I tried first. I gave myself about a week to see if my body got the message and, and began to move through the process of, of clearing the uterus on its own. Um, this obviously involves the least amount of intervention, but it doesn't always work. You know, sometimes the body just doesn't get the message. For me, this week was really difficult because I was continuing to have more and more pregnancy symptoms. My body seemed to be developing more HCG. My boobs were getting fuller, I felt more bloated, I felt a little bit nauseous, and it really messed with my mind. If you select this option, at least initially, your care provider will want to check in with you regularly because if you start to have, you know, heavy bleeding, prolonged bleeding, or you develop an infection, you know, if the body is not able to fully expel everything, you know, in the uterus, obviously they, they need to know about that so they can support you. Um, and of course, if the body just never releases, your, your care provider will We'll talk to you about other options. Um, okay, and in this video, I'm really going to focus, in addition to, to the waiting, on, on misoprostol. Um, the, the next video will be on how to prepare for a DNC, what to expect from a DNC. So again, right now we're going to focus on misoprostol. So misoprostol, this is a synthetic prostaglandin medication. It's used to treat things like stomach ulcers. It's sometimes given to women to induce labor um, or to treat postpartum bleeding. It, it helps the body release the pregnancy after a miscarriage by causing the cervix to dilate and by causing the uterus to contract. Um, it can be taken orally or vaginally. A lot of care providers now um, want you to, to administer it vaginally. It's usually just like a few little white pills. It usually takes a few hours to start working after you insert the pills, um, at least if you know it, it works as it should. I usually recommend taking misoprostol in the morning so and taking it during a day that you have no obligations, you don't have to go to work, you don't have to go anywhere, you can fully be at home. And if you do have, have children, it's pretty important to find somebody to watch them that day so you can just totally be in a private space, give your body plenty of time to to do what it needs to do. Um, you can also have ibuprofen on hand to help manage any pain. You can also have a heating pad. It's really important to stay hydrated. Um, for me, it was helpful. I think I was I watched like Friends for eight hours. So finding a movie, a TV show that can be a bit of a distraction can be helpful. You also want to have an extra heavy pad on and um, and if you can also lay on like a water resistant pad um, because if it works there's going to be a decent amount of, of a bleeding. You also want to be wearing you know pants, shorts, something that you don't mind getting some blood on if it does um, leak through the pad. You should also know that when it starts working, the contractions can be really intense. You know, for me, they were almost as intense as they were um, when I was going through active labor with my son. Granted, it didn't last nearly as long, but it was was more intense than I expected. And of course, each woman is different with what level of discomfort they have after taking misoprostol. For me, it was quite a bit of discomfort. Um, you should also keep an eye on what comes out of your body so you can let your care provider know. For me, um, this really large clump of, of tissue came out of me into the toilet 
during the period of um, the heaviest bleeding. And I suspect that was, was the embryo and the other material from, from the pregnancy. Um, after, you know, the pregnancy is expelled, the, the contractions should subside and the bleeding should start to become lighter and lighter. You know, after that clump of tissue came out of me, um, the, the contractions, they still lasted for about an hour, but then they started to taper off. The bleeding got, got lighter and lighter. If the bleeding intensifies, if the, the contractions continue for a prolonged period, you know, after what you think was the fetus has has been expelled or or you develop a fever if you just feel, feel off definitely let your care provider know um, again as all of the pregnancy material might not have released and your body's still trying to get it out um, if it doesn't work at all you might need to take it again in some cases a dnc might be needed again if it if it doesn't work or if your care provider suspects that that everything did not come out you know, while it, taking this medication was emotionally and physically painful, it did give me closure for me. It was, I, I, I'm glad I chose this option, um, but I can absolutely understand too why a woman would choose to just wait or to get a DNC. And in the next video, I'll cover a DNC. Mm -hmm.